In France, the recent advances of English have intensified the vigilance of the Académie Française, appointed three centuries ago to defend the French language against such franglais as Le Weekend and Le Cash Flow. The French government recently convened a meeting of 41 francophone nations to create new French words to replace the flood of new English technological terms. So Jumbo Jet became Gros Porteur. The compact disc became Le Disque Audio Numérique. Le Soft, for software, became Logiciel. And the Walkman became Le Baladeur. Perhaps it's a losing battle. English is becoming a trademark of the world's multinational corporations. From Sweden, from Korea, from Holland, from Japan. The ultimate example is the Fiat subsidiary, Iveco. Iveco's range of heavy-duty vehicles runs from trucks to amphibious fire engines. Based in Turin, the money is Italian, French and German. None of its executives is British or American. But Iveco's company language is English. My name is Giorgio Bertoldi and uh, of course I am Italian. This was also a, an extremely good occasion to meet uh, my colleagues. My name is uh, Jean-Pierre Neveu. As you can hear, I'm French. Normally with engineering people, especially when we talk about heavy trucks, we are using only English. My name is Peter Ohauke. I'm a Danish subject, a businessman, traveling through the world. English is part of his luggage. My name is Peter Kaminski. I'm German. When I send the forms to the various branch of Iveco in the world, it's written in English. Tomorrow he might be in the States. On the next step on his business trip, he might be in Hong Kong. He might then go to Sweden or to Holland, or he might come to Switzerland. And uh, it's the only way that I mean, to understand something and to communi communicate with people it was really to, to speak English. We have a language at the moment that is more international than any other language ever has been in the world. I cannot believe that there are many of us who do not feel the advantages of belonging to, sorry about the cliché, the global village. It looks to be certain that English will remain a world language for the foreseeable future unless there's some catas cataclysmic political change. For instance, supposing a nuclear winter came along uh, and all, literally all Americans were turned into blocks of cindered ice. And there were no American speakers left. Clearly, the situation would change dramatically. Uh, I think it's a uh, glorious language. I think it's, it's growing. It's, uh, it's getting more expressive. Uh, it's, it's getting more global, getting more ex accepted around the world as the second language. Supposing that there is some kind of stability, political stability, into the distant future, American English seems to be winning hands down and will remain. American English, not British English, will remain as the major global form of English uh, into the indefinite future. At the end of the 20th century, the English language has crossed all frontiers, even space. There couldn't be a better time to look back to see where our extraordinary language has come from. In the story of English, we'll show you our language in all its colors, from the frontiers of knowledge to the rhythms of everyday speech in all its variety around the world. In this story, we'll meet kings, conquerors, traders, and explorers, the great poets and playwrights, linguistic scholars and the writers of dictionaries. But above all, we find that the making of English is not imposed from above, it bubbles up from below, from the speech of every man and every woman. In this story, we will take an extraordinary journey from an obscure Germanic tribe to the edge of the universe. In 1977, the space probe Voyager blasted off on man's most ambitious exploration of the planets. 
In case it encountered intelligent life, the scientists sent simple greetings in 55 languages. But the principal message from the human race to anyone out there in space was read by Kurt Waldheim in the accents of his Austrian fatherland in English. As the Secretary General of the United Nations, an organization of 147 member states who represent almost all of the human inhabitants of the planet Earth, I send greetings on behalf of the people of our planet. We step out of our solar system into the universe seeking only peace and friendship to teach if we are called upon, to be taught if we are fortunate. We know full well that our planet and all its inhabitants are but a small part of this immense universe that surrounds us and it is with humility and hope. an organization of 147 member states who represent almost all of the human inhabitants of the planet Earth, I send greetings on behalf of the people of our planet. We step out of our solar system into the universe seeking only peace and friendship to teach if we are good upon